In this video, we're gonna be taking a look at this Sunlu filament connector. Now, at the beginning, I'll show you guys how to use it. At the end, I'll tell you what I think about it. But before we get started, one thing I just wanna bring up is that if you've watched other videos on this filament connector, you may have noticed that other YouTubers, at least from the videos that I've watched, have all been connecting small pieces of filament together. And while this is more convenient to film, it's not really a realistic use case scenario. Likely what you'll be doing is connecting two partially used rolls of filament to make one bigger roll. And the reason that this is important is because if you've ever unraveled a piece of filament from a spool, it wants to go back to being a circle and it tends to be a little bit unruly to deal with and handle, especially when you're trying to connect two of these pieces together while it's still connected to the spool. So of course, I'm going to be demonstrating this in this realistic use case scenario. I'm not gonna be using two smaller pieces and you'll see why that matters in a moment. And of course, where we have issues like this, I've got solutions. So keep watching to the end of this video for my solution for that. Let's get started. We'll begin with the unboxing. And inside of the box, of course, you will find the Sunlu filament connector. It's all pre-assembled, so there's no assembly necessary. In a moment, we'll get more familiar with this thing, but for now, we'll just put it aside. Also, inside of the box, you'll find a bag of these PTFE sleeves, and you'll find a USB cable. However, to my slight disappointment, what you won't find in the box is a power supply. So you will need to provide your own USB power supply that can supply at least two amps. I'll put a link to one of those in the video description down below, but you'll plug the USB-A cable into your power supply and the other end of the connector into the back of the filament welder. As soon as it's plugged in, you'll find a small power button icon appear on the screen. You can press that, and when you turn it on, it will immediately start heating up to the set point for the default filament, which is PLA. Eventually, it will reach that set point, and if you press the button in the bottom right-hand corner, you'll see the filament type start to flash, and you can use the arrows on the left-hand side to scroll through all of the various presets. And if you tap the button again in the bottom right-hand corner, the set point, so the temperature that you wish for this thing to reach, will also start to flash, and again, you can use the arrows to increase or decrease that temperature, and it looks like for certain filaments like PLA, the temperature is restricted, so the highest I can go in that case is 205 degrees Celsius. In this demonstration, I'm going to be attempting to connect together two rolls of Sunlu PLA. And as I mentioned in the intro, I'm going to be using the filament still connected to the rolls. So this will be more challenging than using just small pieces. And you're going to want to cut the ends of the filament completely square. Do not cut them at 45 degree angles as if you were feeding them into your extruder. Then I can slip the one strand of filament into one of these PTFE sleeves, push it in halfway, and then slip the second strand of filament in there, butt the two ends together so that they're touching. Now I can open up the clear cover of the filament connector, and inside you'll find the heating element covered by another black plastic cover, and we can expose that by pushing the silver button. Be careful not to touch the top of the black plastic cover. There is a warning printed on that cover, but it can be hot and you can burn yourself. And this here is where things become a little bit challenging because that cover does not want to stay up. The filament, when still connected to the roll, wants to twist, and you've only got two hands to do this. So you have to somehow maneuver the filament in there, line up the center of the splice with the center of the heating element, close the cover, and while things are heating up in there, you should be trying to press the two ends together lightly. And then when you hear the beeping noise, you need to release the cover and pull everything out. And in that case, I left it in there too long and I pressed too hard and it turned into a mess. So I'm gonna try again. And on my second attempt, I wasn't able to get the top cover down flat. And so presumably on the inside, the heating element wasn't making proper contact. And then on top of that, I pulled the filament apart prematurely so it hadn't yet solidified. So let's try this for a third time. This time around, I still didn't get the top cover to seat correctly because I'm trying to use both hands to keep the filament stable to prevent it from twisting while I'm trying to push the two ends together. Then even after the machine beeps and I release that cover, I have to remove one of my hands and the filament wants to again twist apart. However, I was lucky enough to catch it before it did pull apart and then I placed it in the top section here, which is actually intended to cut the PTFE tube when you push the clear cover down. So that's exactly what I did once I felt that the filament was cool. And the blade seems to do a very reliable job of cutting these thin PTFE tubes without damaging the filament. Now in this case, I did get the two sides to weld together, or at least it appears that way. 
In a few moments, you'll see that it eventually does fail, but initially it passed the pull test. I was really pulling on this thing hard and it wasn't coming apart. Now, because that PTFE tube is thin and not very rigid, the profile is probably not perfectly circular, but when I used a caliper to measure it, it came in at 1.9 millimeters or so at its widest point. So it should pass through a spring tensioned extruder, but while I was measuring it, the joint came apart and broke. After those first few practice runs, I was feeling more confident this time around. I did lower the set temperature slightly to experiment with a lower temperature, but also I repositioned my camera because I felt like part of my problem was how I had the camera that I'm filming with positioned directly in front of the filament connector and it was making it awkward for me to work with my hands. So in this shot here, I'm no longer reaching around my camera, but as you can see with the filament connected to the roll, so the filament still wants to twist around and those PTFE tubes are very thin. So they're not providing really any structural rigidity to hold the two ends together. So you're trying to kind of do this dance between pushing the filament together, holding it in place, closing the cover and paying attention to the timing, listening for that tone, releasing it, and then somehow keeping the joint together while it's hot and melted. But again, with my camera repositioned, I was able to make this work as I could work a little better with my hands. Again, I placed the filament in the cutting section and waited for it to cool down before cutting the PTFE tube. And in this case, we do have a successful joint finally. The diameter around the joint measures in around 1.92 millimeters, anything bigger than two millimeters. And I would probably start to get worried about it jamming up in the extruder or even the throat of the hot end. But if you have those concerns, you could probably even shave that area down with a hobby knife. And then this time around, you can see that I've pulled on the filament, but also I'm trying to wobble it back and forth to see if it will shear apart. Luckily it didn't, so I would be confident in spooling that up and running it through my printer. However, what I was less confident with was my ability to repeat this process reliably. And so I'm going to attempt this again, and you can see I've got the filament still attached to the rolls, but this time we're going to use this tool that I designed. And it's got this spiral pattern in there so we can get the filament in and out. And the out part is important because once it's spliced together, you don't want to have to run the entire half roll or whatever's left on that spool through this entire tool. So we can just kind of unravel it through the spiral and get it out when it's done. So most of the process looks the same where we'll place one end of the filament into a PTFE sleeve, push it halfway in, and then insert it into our tool, wind it through the spiral. The other end of the filament can also get passed through the other side of the tool, line the two ends up, insert it into the PTFE sleeve, and butt the two ends together. And you can see the tool holds those together, so now you have a free hand where you can operate the rest of the equipment. It's still a little annoying that the covers on the filament connector are not spring-loaded, they just fall down, so that's going to happen to you every once in a while, but at least you can deal with that with your free hand. And while the filament is heating up, you can push the two ends of the filament together. The tool will act like a guide and push the two ends straight. And when you pull it out of the machine, you can see that the tool is still holding it together nice and straight. And there's some room for you to grab the filament near the joint and continue to lightly push it together while it cools. When I was satisfied that the joint was completely cooled, I can use the spiral pattern to pull the filament out and then insert it into the PTFE tube cutter. And this time around with using this tool, I was able to get a successful connection on my first try. The joint successfully passed the pull and wiggle test. So again, in this case, I was confident in using this joint as well in one of my printers. So if you guys are looking for this tool to make this entire process slightly less painful, check the link down below where I've made this printable tool free for download. So that brings us to the end of the video where I'm gonna tell you guys what I think about this thing. So the first thing is, does it work? And I would say, yes, it does work as advertised, although it will probably take you a few tries at least to get your first successful weld. After that, if you haven't used it for a while, again, it may take you a few tries to get a successful weld. There is a certain amount of pressure that you need to apply to get the filament connected together and you wanna get that timing right and the temperature right. So there's a small amount of trial and error to this process. 
The second thing is the price. So considering that this product is probably the most polished version of a filament connector that I've seen out in the market so far, I think it's a pretty reasonable price point for a tool of convenience that you're not gonna be using every single day, but when you do need it, uh, it does work and it will produce usable results. So price point, not too bad. And the last thing is just simply who is going to be using this. So in my opinion, going back to what I said at the beginning of the video, you're not going to be connecting tiny little pieces of filament together hundreds of times to create one giant roll. This is just not realistic for this tool here. So I want you guys to have realistic expectations. Who I think or what I think this is primarily going to be used for is again, connecting two partially used rolls of filament together. So when you got two rolls that are maybe about halfway down and you know that you're going to do a giant print, let's say, and you want that print to run overnight or maybe during the day when you're not home, and you know that if you start printing it on half a roll that you're getting close to that point or you know for sure that the filament is going to run out and you're not gonna be there to change the filament in your machine once the filament runout sensor triggers. So this is the case where you would weld those two half rolls together to make one full roll and run your giant print without having to worry about it running out in the middle and you not being there to replace that roll of filament and having the printer, of course, just sit there all day with the heater on waiting for you to get home. So I think that's primarily the use case for this thing. Again, don't be trying to connect lots of these together. I just want you guys to have realistic expectations for this thing and recognize what it's primarily intended to be used for. So that's it for this video. Thanks to Sunlu for sending me their filament connector. If you guys are looking for this thing, check the link in the video description down below and be sure to check out the Sunlu website. They've got some exciting new types of filament coming out. You'll find that on their website, of course. And if you guys are looking for that tool that I made to help in the process of using this filament connector, link is also in the video description down below, as well as a link to my website, embracemaking.com, where you guys can find lots of 3D printer upgrades and accessories. Visiting my website is a great way to support me and my work if you guys are interested in doing that. And of course, the easiest thing to do is hit that subscribe button down below so you don't miss my next video. Thanks for watching.